Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. You know, we talk a lot on this show about getting the help you need when you need it and not delaying taking action to get the help you need. Because when you do that, what happens? You end up having to backtrack. You actually end up having to invest more later on than you would if you'd just gotten the help up front. Today, we're going to talk specifically about websites, sales pages, and the good stuff that really goes behind the scenes for the foundation of your business. And I know we've had episodes on having that solid foundation. Part of that is your personal brand, but part of that is your brand marketing strategy. And your website really is the core of that brand marketing strategy. People have to know where to find you. They need to be able to connect with you, learn more about you, and trust you. And without having that cornerstone where people can find you online that you own, that isn't going to go away if social media disappears, that you don't have to worry about it being hacked the way you would a social media account losing all your followers, that website is critically important. And part of that, when you are going to launch a business, launch a program, um, you know, try to grow your email list, whatever it is, you need sales pages too. And we're going to talk in depth today about what goes into a sales page so that it can effectively grab the attention of your audience and then convert them to a paying client. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Lauren Wood on to the Robin Graham Show. Welcome, Lauren. Hey, Robin. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Thank you for being here. I know you were under the weather this week earlier, yeah. so I thank you for uh, mustering up the energy to join us and share your brilliance. Thank you. That's life. I feel like I had like one sick day and then I'm like, that's cut. That's like kids need you, work needs you. I'm like, keep going. Keep going. Yep. That's how it is, especially as a mom and entrepreneur. Yeah. Like there's no time. Um, okay. So will you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you are today? Yeah. So interesting enough, like the part that I've like avoided for, I don't know, the first two years of my business was talking about the fact that I was a teacher before even starting my business um, and like how I decided to leave that. Um, but it's such a big part of my story because I am the first person in my family to even get like a bachelor's degree. And then I went on to get a graduate degree um, in a specialized area. So I was a reading specialist. Um, and like through the past three years, I'm like, okay, this is actually truly who I am is like a person who loves to explore really deep and like come up with solutions for people. Like I was so good at helping kids who hated reading turn into love reading. Um, and then now like I've transitioned into starting my own business and then getting into web design and like web design truly is the like endless bottomless pit of problem solving and figuring out new things. And so um, I think it just really fits with who I am. Oh, I love that. And you know, we do talk about on the show too, and well, I talk a lot about how your journey is every single step of your journey is what brought you to where you are today. And it can be, and, and I say this all the time, you don't have to have a degree to be an entrepreneur. You don't have to have a degree in something specific because every experience you've had has given you an opportunity to learn and grow and become the, the expert that you are today. And I love that you say that because we, um, like for me, that strategy piece of, you know, that's just how my brain works. Right. And when I was in pharmacy, that was such strategic thinking from a science perspective, but yet I have that creative, creative component too. So when I left the medical field and became a photographer, and then that led me into the, the whole brand marketing strategy, it's, it's amazing how, when you look back on your journey, what you did, even, you know, 15, 20, 30 years ago, what you did is such an integral part of who you become and now how you can serve other people. So I love that you talked about that. And well, we're not going to talk anymore about that right now. <laughs> we, can talk, we can talk more about that later. But um, so let's dive into this a little bit. So yes, web websites are incredible in terms of so problem solving in the back end, there's so much detail and we could dive into so many different topics, but for the sake of time today, I think I'd like to focus on sales pages because mm -hmm. I think that's something that we do need. And oftentimes if you're not in the marketing realm and you haven't done sales pages before, they can feel overwhelming. And I think they're only going to convert if they're done efficiently and effectively. So let's talk about that. 
Yeah, um, for sure. So yeah, a sales page is, I mean, essentially you want to be in the mind of your person who's landing on the page. Um, and so one of the biggest things that you want to think about when you're creating your sales page is like, how am I communicating with this person throughout the entire page? Um, it should be about them and everything that you write. And so this does take having um, some background with your offer already. Like this isn't something I would recommend if it's like a brand new offer, like do not put the time into creating the sales page on your website because you really need to do that market research. But once you have it and you're able to talk to, um, you know, what things are they experiencing? What are the benefits and changes going to be that are going to happen for them? Then that's when it's really a great time to go ahead and create a sales page for your offer. Okay. I love that. So do you have specific things? I mean, obviously the content needs to resonate with the person you want to sell right. to. So do you have specific like a format or a structure that works well for a sales page? Yeah. So like the first thing that I would say is your statement at the very top, like that section, that hero section that everybody, everybody calls it, like before somebody scrolls on your page, like that has got to capture somebody's attention right away. And it can't be cutesy and wordy or witty. Like that truly just needs to be to the point of like, what is the offer? What's going to be the difference for them? Um, you know, for example, I'm working on one right now and the the statement says, match your image to your impact. Like, yeah, that's a little bit witty, but like, I get it. Like who I am is going to align with how I'm impacting people. Um, so you want to make sure that you're clear there. And then you always want to think about like your different buyers um, when this happens too. So throughout the page, there's going to be somebody who comes to the page and is probably ready to invest right away. And so you want to give those people the opportunity. So I always put a button at the very top in that hero section um, that takes them straight down to like the checkout or then the application or whatever that step is. Um, and then for the other people who want to keep scrolling, then you do just allow them to keep scrolling through the page. Okay. I love that. And um the other thing that I wanted to add about the hero image, that is space, that's real estate for SEO as well. So whatever words you have that you want to be ranked for in a Google search or online search, that it's important to have those keywords, key phrases there too as well, right? Yes, yes, definitely. And that's where you want to use like your H1 tag. Um, and then as you're going through that page, like you want to make sure you're continuing to use that those keywords again, or even use synonyms of those keywords, um, because Google can pick up on that too. Um, and then as you're going through the sales page, there's a difference in like website design and sales page design, right? Like website design, we actually want people to go to different pages. On sales page design, we want them to stay on the page and take the action. Um, so the big thing you need to do right away is you do not want your regular website header on your sales page. You need to find a way to get rid of that. Um, and I even get rid of the footer and just put like a very short, that's like, here are the terms and conditions, like here's the copyright on the bottom of the sales page. Um, and then also as you're designing it, you want their eyes to go down. So instead of like, you know, doing three columns across the page, as you would maybe on a website, on a sales page, you actually want to stack those columns so that somebody continues to scroll throughout the page. Mm. So let's talk about that because you mentioned the H1 header. So when, or H1 tag, whatever, when you, so when you're going through the sales page, how often should you break up with, with headers, like to, to get attention or to get that scroll to continue? Yeah. So you will generally have like different sections of your page. So you'll have, you know, the intro section, and then you'll have like your benefits section or your pain point section. And so that's where you want to include those different headers um, and then pop in testimonials throughout. Those are a great way to break up the page. Um, and so, and then like, you don't want to, so kind of the top section of the page, the sales page should be, I'm going to introduce um, what it is, but not not necessarily the offer. Like you're just introducing the thing, but not saying like, this is the name of the offer, if that makes sense. Um, and then as you go down, then you're going to talk about, okay, like what are they currently experiencing? So then that's another section where you want to start with a header and keep going. Um, and then after that, you would include another section that tells them, okay, what could be different for you? How could things um, change? What could life be like for them? And as you're going through each of those sections, as we go to like a different, um, a different feature, like a different way that this offer is going to impact them, that's where we want to think about breaking it up with different headers um, and also using images throughout there to break it up. So you don't ever want to scroll um, and have too much of a scroll without an image of somebody of something on the sales page. 
Mm. So let's, let's talk about images. Cause I think, mm-hmm. you know, images are great for SEO as well. So yes. whenever you have, you're putting the images on your website, obviously you want to make sure you have the alt text. You want to make sure you have the description and using your keywords and key phrases in those as well. When we talk about images, um, and this goes back to my branding photography days, it's really important to have your face there somewhere. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Yes, a hundred percent. Um, yeah. Well, and I love just like faces, like throughout sales pages in general, but it's like a different style again, like from a website, it's like, I'm okay with more stock style photos on websites. Um, but on a sales page, I really love like the ones that don't feel stocky that feel like just like real life. And often I find those from like the free stock photo websites, like Unsplash or Pexels for that kind of stuff. Um, because it just feels more real. And, um, and then, yeah, you want to have like photos of people that represent your ideal clients in the transformation. So not in like the pain that they're having right now, you want people to see the vision that they're going to go to. Um, and then as you get further down the sales page, of course, you're going to introduce yourself. So you definitely want to have a great photo of you there. Um, and I'm glad, glad you brought up photos because that can be another piece of a sales page is like, we want the page to load super quick. Um, people are there for a reason. And if they don't get what they're looking for pretty quickly, they're going to like assume that the page is broken or, you know, whatever, they don't need it and they'll go find it somewhere else. Um, So one thing you can do with your images is you want to make sure that you are compressing them. So like some websites will auto compress them for you, but I always just play it safe and run it through a compressor uh, to make sure that the file size is smaller and could load really quickly. Yeah, that's a, that's a big thing. And it, it affects your domain ranking as well. Mm-hmm. Any, anywhere images are on your website, you want to make sure that they load quickly. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's and, like the pro tip too. Cause like somebody who's DIY typically doesn't think of that. And it's such a simple thing to do. Like that's not a fancy developer thing or anything like that. So you definitely need to be doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, okay. So images and then I just lost my train of thought. Listeners, you know, this happens to me all the time. I get going and then I get like, oh, sidetracked. Um, Okay, so let's talk. Do we, what about video? Because when we talk about video, that can slow down a site Mm -hmm. and slow down the loading. But yet everybody says, oh, video, you need video, you need video. And of course, if there is a video, they may stay longer to watch the video. But what are your thoughts about video on a sales page? Yeah, it's super powerful. Um, So what you want to do is have some sort of outside hosting for that video. So you could use like YouTube, if you have Loom or Vimeo, you could always upload it there. Um, And then typically your website builder will allow you just to embed that link. So you're not actually hosting the video on your page. Um, And then you can do different things. Like you can allow it instead of like setting it to autoplay on the page, which can slow down load time significantly. You can set it to like pop up when somebody clicks on it. Um, But you want to with videos, you know, like a lot of times they can look really ugly. Like they could just have, you know, the little play box on there. So you want to make sure that you make it really um, visible that it is a video to click on and draw people in. So I love using mock-ups for that. So you can grab, you know, something that you can do this even in Canva. You can grab um, like a laptop image and pop in something that looks like it's a video to hit play on or an iPad or something like that and put it there. And that way when somebody clicks, then it opens up and it gives a really great experience for somebody. Yeah, I love that. Well, let's talk about calls to action. So how many times, you mentioned the button at the top Mm -hmm. for those people that are already ready to buy. What about other places throughout the page? How often should we have a call to action? And do you have some creative ideas for those calls to action? Yeah, so I love doing them at least every other section. Um, And you want the calls to action to be what's called like, and I'm not a copywriter, but like direct response marketing, where it's like they're saying, I'm ready to have this, or I'm ready for this transformation, or I'm in, like you want to make it like that they're actually saying those words. Um, And then with buttons, they need to be really stand out, especially on a sales page. So I typically reserve like one specific brand color that's pretty bold for buttons on sales pages. And that is like where I use it throughout. And it's okay to even make the button a little bit bigger or the text a little bit bigger than you would again, like on your website, because this is a sales page where you want people to take action. Mm, I love that. I don't know that I'd have to look at my sales page to, from my last launch to see. Well, I don't remember if my buttons were bigger or not. That's a good, yeah. I, I like that. Because So what other differences are there for a sales page from a regular website page that we should be aware of? Are there more than what we've already discussed or? 
Um, I mean, we mentioned like obviously taking out the header and footer. I think that's the big one that a lot of people will miss on a sales page. Um, and then, you know, this is, like I said, just for this offer. So this is not, um, like it doesn't need to go straight into the benefits and features of the offer. Like as we go down through the sales page, we want to include that. One thing that I see a lot of people do, um, and I think this kind of leans into like when you're doing this on your website, of course, somebody's coming to look for this service. Like you just want to like tell them what it is right away, right? But on a sales page, uh, we're really like warming people up to it. And so we don't want to like call out the offer too soon because it's kind of like, well, that's weird. Like, why is that there? I'm I'm like not sure what this is yet. So you want to reserve really like the first half of the page for just talking to your people, like really um, making sure that you're communicating what they're thinking, what they want, their desires. And then when you introduce the offer, um, you want to make it feel really tangible. So the way that we make things feel tangible with sales page design is having mock-ups. And that's not something that you would see as often on a website, especially if we're just kind of listing out services. So a mock-up would be like taking anything that comes from the offer um, that's like a digital file and then, you know, putting it into like the pages fanned out or into a computer screen or into an iPad screen so that it actually feels like they're getting all of this. And then that really drives up the value of your offer. Hmm, I love that. That's a great tip. So when we talk about the the copy on the page and I realizing you're not a copywriter, but when you're building these pages, I'm sure you read a ton of copy. Yeah. When So when we actually set the structure of the page, we should talk about the pain points first or the benefits first before we, you know, as we're talking to them and, and really grabbing their attention and mm -hmm. all those things, like, is there a specific structure? You said, wait for the offer, but is there a specific structure to the page that as far as yes. what we're saying, when we're saying it? Yes. So I, I always introduce the pain points first, um, because you want to get into what they're currently experiencing. And then you can start to paint that picture of what it could look like if they transform or if they, you know, if things were different in this, you know, different world with your offer. And so that's where you really start to get into, you know, their desires. Um, and then you want to, you know, paint in, start to paint in how does your offer fit into that? Like, and that's where you want to introduce the offer. So we go pain points, um, you know, tr future transformation kind of statement. And then we want to get into the offer. Um, and then once you get into the offer, you do want to start to like explain out of like what's included, because if somebody's gotten that far down the page, they definitely want to start collecting that kind of information of like, okay, what's in it for me? Um, you know, what are the different modules going to be? What's the, what are the different like PDFs or workbooks that are going to be included? And then one thing that I think is super powerful to do once you get somebody down to this place where you're introducing the offer is to actually start to list out what would be the value of those things individually and actually add it up for them. You know, you're doing like all of this brain work for somebody so that they can just make their decision quickly. You don't want them to have to like go away from the page and think about things or make a decision, just do it all for them. So like I'll list everything out, put the price points um, and then add it all up and then tell them, okay, like you're getting all of this, which could be this price, but this is how much you're getting it for today. Um, and then you can even like price anchor it against something else. Like, okay, like if it's a group program versus one-on-one, -on -one, you've been doing one-on-one -on -one for a long time. Like my one-on-one -on -one cost is usually this much, but you're getting like this group program, which is going to give you some one-on-one -on -one access for this much. And like, you know, it'll never be this price again, but like, I mean, obviously with integrity, but like you want to, um, to show people the value of it. Yeah. I love that. So you mentioned briefly testimonials. I would love yeah. your perspective on how many testimonials should we have and where should they be placed throughout the copy? Yeah. So I like to break them up as we're scrolling through the page. So about like Every two to three sections, I'll even pop in a testimonial. And then um, after you've introduced the offer, because people are like, okay, they'll see the offer and then they start to like have almost this like, mm, but is it the right fit for me? Should I do this? Then after I've introduced the offer is where I'll actually pop in the video testimonials. Um, because if somebody's gotten down that far, they're probably looking for like a, just a little bit more confirmation that this is the right thing for them. Um, so there are sometimes I'll do like three testimonials side by side where they can like pop the, the video up and watch that video. Um, and the other ones could be like text testimonials that go through, but you definitely want to include an image of people if you can. Um, everybody knows that like we're picking the best testimonials, right? Like nobody's, <laughs> it's not a secret, but uh, you know, I think one way to make that 
feel more authentic is to actually have the real photo of the person versus like, oh, okay, they just pulled these random words, but like, who is this random person? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. This has been amazing. And we're at our, our time limit here, but can you just, yep. I guess, um, if there's any other like key secret, maybe like the conclusion, like, is there on a sales page, like, how do you end it? Or do you end it with the buy button? And then we'll wrap up. Yeah. Um, so one thing you definitely want to include are your FAQs. Um, and you can, you know, collect and build on those throughout the time. And then I think one of the biggest things, this is personal preference, but I see this make conversions go up all the time is including some kind of guarantee. I mean, and it doesn't have to be like, you're going to give them their money back for a lifetime if they come back, but just like allowing somebody to see you as a human. So like what I like to say is, look, I get it. I'm in business just like you. And I understand that making this investment um, can, you know, feel scary. And so I'm going to give you X, Y, Z guarantee for this program. If for any, if for X, Y, Z reason, like it doesn't work for you, just email me and I'll give you your money back. Um, and I know people feel, feel afraid of that because they're like, oh, everybody's going to take advantage of that. People, people don't like abuse that power, but it does help somebody who's like, I don't know, like, what if this isn't the right thing for me? It does help them go ahead and get over that bump. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. And if you truly believe in your program, you shouldn't be afraid mm -hmm. to put that out there. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like a security blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lauren, this has been fabulous. Can you tell the listeners how they can connect with you, learn more for you from you and maybe even hire you to do their sales pages? Yeah. Um, you can connect with me. I'm on Instagram a lot. So my Instagram is at Lauren Wood Design and then my website is laurenwooddesign.com. Thank you so much for being here. Listeners, if you found this information helpful, please give Lauren a little love over on Instagram and please leave us a rating and review and share this episode with friends, family members who you know may be launching something soon and need a sales page. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see y'all next week.